I am really excited about today's video. Uh, I've been thinking about doing it for a while, speaking on the subject of raising grateful children, and I thought what a better time to do it than right now. We are less than a week away from Thanksgiving, and this is on our hearts and our minds. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another video. I am very blessed that I was able to uh, do a survey and kind of interview my parents, my in-laws, and then a couple who are basically like a third set of parents to me and my husband Weston, and I got their take and their insight on this subject. I asked them, what did you do to raise grateful children? Weston and I are so blessed that we both had parents who really really focused on teaching us virtues and I as a wife am so grateful that my husband had parents who raised him so well. It is such a blessing and so um, I'm going to be sharing their insights along with these tips that I have for you for raising children who are thankful, for raising children who show gratitude. If you are new here then welcome. My name is Natalie and I make lifestyle and mommy videos every Wednesday and Friday and I would love it if you would subscribe and turn channel notifications on so that you don't miss when I post a new video. My first tip, and I think the overarching idea for all of these principles that I'm going to be talking about today, is to set a good example for your children. From the moment they're born, our children are looking to us as their example. And I have noticed, especially in the last couple of years, that when I have an attitude problem, so do my kids. They really reflect my tone and my attitude. If my attitude is ungrateful and grumpy and stressed, then they definitely adopt the same sort of attitude. And um, my husband and I definitely have been talking about this more as our kids get older. Our boys are three now and they are repeating things that we are saying and they are um, repeating attitudes and when we show gratitude, they're definitely going to adopt that for themselves. And honestly, if you take nothing away from this video, this number one idea or tip is really the most important in my opinion and the thing that I see make the greatest impact. So my number two tip is to look for ways to implement showing gratitude into a regular routine. It's going to look different for everybody and it's going to look different in different seasons of your own family. So back when our boys were little babies sitting in their high chairs and we would give them little uh, pieces of cereal on their tray, we would instruct them to say thank you. And at nine months old, when they couldn't talk, it was actually in sign language. We would show them how to do that. And we're going to be starting that soon with our seven month old baby. And now that they're three years old, it looks like them verbally saying thank you, looking people in the eye to uh, show their gratitude and say thank you and I, that's something that's really big to me is teaching our kids to say thank you when something is given to them when something is done for them um, when they feel grateful the the responses to say thank you if it's even like for the most mundane thing like I helped them up onto the toilet to go potty while we're potty training. That's like a practical application for our family right now. Um, or to like a big thing, grandma brings them a treat and it's a surprise for them and they feel very excited about it. So um, always teaching them to say thank you. It's not only uh, polite and it's good manners, but it also starts getting them into the mindset of regularly, like part of their routine, showing gratitude. And it might be an every 10 minutes sort of implementation into your routine and um, on d other days it might be you know once a day we sit together at the dinner table and we make sure that we're speaking about what we are thankful for or before bedtime after we close the storybook we say our prayers together and we thank the Lord for what he has given us and um, something that my dad said in his answer to my question how have you raised your children to be grateful he said by recognizing that our blessings are a gift from God and it's based on his love for us, not our worthiness. And I thought that was great. That can be part of what we think God for is not just our material things, but also what he has given us 
um, that we just don't deserve. And that can be spiritual things as well. You guys obviously hear me speaking in this way because I'm a person of faith and I'm a Christian and I know I have a mixed audience and not all of you adhere to the same uh, faith that I do, but I think this principle of showing gratitude um, either in prayer form or I know some people keep like a thankfulness journal with their kids. I think these are great ideas because again, it's in your routine and it becomes habit and it instills gratefulness from the word go with your family. So tip number three is to be aware of and to serve those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Um, this again looks different for every family in different stages in any given family. We have been sponsoring a child through Compassion International for a while now. It is a blessing to us as well as to the child that we are sponsoring, um, but we couldn't always afford to do that. Other times it has been serving at a local soup kitchen with our church or uh, making donations of uh, canned goods in our closet. And it doesn't have to be just at the holiday season. This can be something that is a part of your regular lives as you go throughout the different seasons of your life. Um, we, after Christmases and Easter's and birthdays, we go through our toys and our belongings, our clothing, and we gather things up to take them to donate um, to a local shelter or uh, the Red Cross or a ministry, a part of our church. And we have been doing this with our kids ever since they were little babies. And sometimes we have tears when that happens. Sometimes we find something that they really like and they forgot about um, and we have conversations with them and we tell them about people who are less fortunate than we are who are in need and actually we have had a great response from our children even though they're only three years old and back even when they were two years old at just gathering things up to be generous toward other people and to show the gratefulness for what we have been given by also giving to others in return. Haley got up from her nap and she's going to join me for the last couple of tips I have for you here. The baby is down here on the floor talking beside me, so you might hear her babble a couple of times. So the next tip I have for you is to establish uh, your kids' expectations or your family's expectations um, when you're going out, when you are visiting family, when you're going to the store, like heading into Walmart, you might pass the toy section. The other day we went past the dessert section in Costco and dealt with a three-year-old meltdown because he wanted one of the cakes. And um, this might be when you are going out to a restaurant. Um, having a conversation before you go anywhere outside the home where there may be temptation to ask for things um, or to have an ungrateful attitude is definitely something that can make a big difference when you are out of the home. Like before we walk into Target, I will tell my kids, Listen, we are not here to purchase anything but this, this, and that. And if we see toys, it would be really fun to go look at them, but we're not going to be bringing anything home with us. They've been a little bit too young so far to really understand this, but Weston and I have definitely made it a rule that we don't get something for them when we're out. Um, and it is on a very rare occasion that we will grab a little trinket off of the shelf and give it to them or give them a little treat or what have you. And I think because it is such a rarity, our children are much more grateful for it when they do get a treat. I think it also teaches them to be grateful for what they have beyond gifts and surprises and treats for basic things that are essential to life. like food on the table and a roof over our heads and a van to drive around and you know the warmth in our home which actually brings me to the answer that my mother-in-law gave um, about how she and my father-in-law raised uh, my husband and his brother and I loved what she had to say she said um, we felt it was important to involve our children in all aspects of what it takes to live through a day and work as a team. Um, one example was the whole process of obtaining firewood, from finding the available source, to chopping and splitting and stacking and hauling it in, to finally having a wonderful source of heat all winter. It helped her children feel grateful for the warmth in their home because they had invested their own time into it and they had the expectation set that this is what we do as a family team. And I really think that 
there's no time like the present and you really can't start too young when it comes to teaching your children to set their expectations and to be grateful for what they do have. And I think the last tip, and it really ties into the first tip, which is setting a good example, is um, showing gratitude in the times where it's not all going your way. The times of disappointment as well as the times of happiness. Um, in the times of June versus November when everyone's thinking about being grateful and many of you may be watching this in the future and it's you know summertime and not this like season of giving thanks or whatever um, but I feel like if you implement these other ideas like having it be a part of your routine to show gratefulness that you're gonna be conditioned to be grateful in the good times as well as the bad and I think showing your children an attitude of gratitude and being grateful together as a family even when you're not in such a great season of life is a really great way to impact your children's hearts forever. And um, my friend Jim, Jim and Teresa are our mentors, and what Jim said, the heart of it is that stuff that matters is eternal. Stuff that doesn't matter is temporary, it's just the stuff around us. And we need to be wise stewards of the things that we are thankful for. And I see that as being uh, material things as well as the things like our family and the love that we share. And I couldn't agree more with what Jim has to say here. And I am definitely going to be passing that along to my kids. I am very happy to be able to pass it along to you guys. And I really do hope that you found encouragement in this video. Um, if you did like this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and definitely share it with someone that you know, maybe your spouse. Thank you for being here with me today and I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you are someone who celebrates that holiday like we do. It is a beautiful time of the year and I love being able to reflect on this topic. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you later.